Today we are talking about how to place ice screws on our ice climbs. Hello again, I'm Jason. Before we can start progressing towards leading ice climbs, we need to master movement technique, and you can watch a couple of videos in our ice climbing series to learn some of the foundations. There's a link in the description. And we need to place solid screws. Today we are talking about that latter point. How do we place a solid screw? In short, a screw's holding power is based on the quality of the ice and the quality of the placement. First, how do we determine good ice? Upon initial visual inspection, we are trying to avoid white or cloudy ice as those are indicators of air pockets. We want to avoid discolored ice that could suggest it is rotten. And we want to avoid chandeliers. We are then also looking for concavities or indentations in the ice. Convexities or bulges are more likely to shear off under load. Having selected a promising section of ice, we now need to place the screw to good effect. It's important to understand that ice screws hold because of the threads on the screw, keeping the screw from pulling out, not from the effect of the ice holding up the screw. Ice is fragile. If we are using it as a shelf to hold the screw up, the lever effect of the fall can shatter that ice below it, making the screw easy to dislodge. Because of that, in good ice, we get the most strength from ice screws when the hanger is lower than the teeth by about 10 to 20 degrees below perpendicular. In this circumstance, ice screws can be as strong as bolts in rock. But if only it were that simple. If the ice isn't really good, and some proportion of those threads aren't fusing to the ice, then having the hanger below perpendicular can lead to the screw pulling out at very low loads. In those circumstances, when the ice is less than ideal, having a flatter placement with the hanger and teeth both closer to perpendicular may be the best option as now we want the marginal protection of the ice being used as a shelf because while subject to shattering, it is at least better than having the screw fall out comparatively easily. Some climbers, and notably IFMGA guides Mark Chauvin and Rob Coppolillo, recommend trying to place ice screws perpendicular to the ice. I've heard reasons that include, one, it is often easier to place a screw at close to zero degrees compared to placing it with teeth higher, and two, it is often difficult to truly assess the quality of the ice, and a zero degree screw is strong enough on good ice, consistently over 12 kilonewtons, even if not the ideal, but it is a better placement in suspect ice. Let's take these two ideas in turn. How do we place a screw, and why might it be easier to do so at zero degrees? Well, a screw placement happens in five steps. Step one, we get ourselves in position by selecting our ice that at least appears to be of good quality, positioning ourselves with a solid stick that is near our center line and with good feet that are of equal elevation. We wanna be at a point where the screw will be driven somewhere between our shoulder and our hip height so that we can apply some force and we make sure our other tool is out of the way. Step two. We want to prep the ice, making sure we have room to turn the screw, cleaning off any rotten surface layers, and even making a concavity if that is what is needed. Step three, holding the screw securely with our palm and protruding from our fingers, we grind the screw back and forth until we have a starting divot. Step four, we now move to the re-gripping technique with consistent clockwise turns until the screw is driven enough to stay somewhat in place. And then step five, we can extend the crank and turn until the hanger is flush with the ice. You can see that trying to drive the screw upwards could create some odd arm angles and increase the likelihood of dropping the screw in the wrong circumstances. But now back to assessment. We assess the ice before making the placement, but now we also want to assess the ice during the placement. Here we want to use sight, feel, and sound. We want to make sure we aren't seeing proliferating cracks or plating from the placement. We are also looking for a consistent core of ice coming from the screw. Any pauses in the expended core likely means that we've hit an air pocket. Similarly, if we feel the resistance stop, we also have likely hit air. And the grinding sound should be consistent as well. All that being said, back to Mr. Chauvin and Coppolillo's point, 
This assessment is art and experience as much as it is a science. So deciding on tilting the hanger down or going in perpendicular will be dependent upon your circumstances and your own view of the relative risks. It is also worth noting that we can sometimes bottom out the screw by hitting rock behind the ice, forcing the screw to stop short of having the flush hanger. This type of placement can dramatically magnify the lever effect we talked about by moving the force of the fall further from the fulcrum. If absolutely necessary, you can tie off the screw to shorten the lever, but don't expect that to be some failsafe. This placement is still far weaker, even if everything works as it is supposed to, but then we also run the risk of the soft goods sliding toward the end of the screw, back to the lever effect, or even getting cut by the hanger or the threads. Avoid tie-offs if at all possible. Which takes us to maybe the most important point of all of this. Ice is highly variable as a medium, and at least according to Will Gadd, for about one third of our ice climbing falls, we will, to use his words, break something major. If you fall off ice climbing, about a third of the time you break something major. So the ice screws are there to keep us from hitting the ground and dying. They are not any type of near guarantee of avoiding significant injury. Sharp things can come hit us in the face, and sharp things on our feet can bite into the ice as we fall past, breaking our ankles, even if our screws hold. More than anything then, ice leading is a mindset shift in protection strategies, with the seasoned leader relying more on their technique with quality kicks and sticks to keep them from ever falling, rather than relying on the protection of screws to make falls inconsequential. So practice recognizing and preparing ice. Practice placing screws. Learn the sights, the feelings, and the sounds, and you can do that all on the ground as you shake off the burn of working on your climbing technique. If you want to go deeper, source materials for this video are linked in the description. How many seasons have you been climbing up ice? What do you like and maybe dislike about it? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share if you want to support us. For more information, you can go to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. As I mentioned, you can check out a video on swinging techniques or maybe check out our entire Intro to Ice Climbing series to get even more information. We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.